Hey everyone. So um, based on the feedback I got on my Instagram posts uh, about um, shooting videos as it pertains to me solving math problems, you know, there's a large uh, group of people that wanted it. So um, in light of my, uh, I'm launching my second CXC cohort um, later part of January of this year or into February of this year. Uh, I was like, okay, let's start with some CXC curriculum. All right, so we're going to kind of do a CXC problem, um, and we're going to kind of start from basics, and then each video will kind of just, you'll see, we'll work more harder or more difficult problems, all right? Feel free to also send your questions if you want me to work them out in a video setting like this, all right? Let's do it. All righty. Okay, so we have a person. <laughs> um and they spend a certain amount of money, $165.31. And then it says inclusive of a uh, sales tax. Now let's discuss this keyword right here. Um, if you think about it, right? When we go to a store, there is, if something costs a certain amount of money, there we don't end up paying that amount of money. So if a shirt costs $50 in the store, when we reach the register, that's not what we pay, right? And so there is something added to it, right? There is a sales tax added to it, which increases the amount that we're going to pay, all right? So it could come kind of go up to 51, 50, right? Or something of that nature, right? So uh, so she spends a certain amount and, it, and this amount includes the sales tax, all right? Um, and the sales tax is 15%, right? Calculate, let me move this thing, calculate the original price of the oranges, all right? Now, um, when you're, when we talk about uh, numbers, right? There's three things that numbers can do, right? So if I had, if I gave you guys $50, uh, that $50 has three options basically, right? If I check you back in five months time, that number can either, remain the same, it could go up and it could go down, right? Zero dollars, right? So those are three options that a particular number has, right? Um, it's either it goes up, it goes down, or it remains the same. Now we're gonna kind of leverage this framework now as we approach things that can increase, things that can decrease, stuff like that, all right? Now the framework is very simple. Obviously, uh, framework, we have to have a starting position. We have to have an ending position. And then there's going to be something that happens to the starting position to get you to the ending position. So we have the starting position here. We have the ending position here. And we have something happening. All right. Now, there's just one here. Okay. He's always there. All right. Now, based on the context of the question, if if, for example, um, the, the starting position, say I had $50 and nothing happened to it, all right, then you wouldn't even do anything to this one. It would just be one. 50 times one is just going to give you back 50, right? Now, suppose you say that it increases, okay? Then you would have an add sign here. So this is for increasing. This is the increasing framework. You're going to have the decrease in framework, which is going to be, what's the opposite of add? Well, opposite of add is to subtract, right? So once again, you have your starting number. If you're increasing, you're going to be adding. If you're decreasing, you're going to be subtracting. And it's going to get you back to your ending value, all right? Framework is pretty simple, right? So now let's kind of do it for this example here. Now, we have to kind of identify the three things we need for this framework, right? We need our beginning, beginning, we need our ending, and we need our percentage that's going to happen. Percentage increasing, percentage decreasing, whatever the case might be, all right? Now, he's, this person spends 165 inclusive of the tax, right? So that's how much money you're gonna pay when you're at the register. Right, so that's going to be your ending. So that's what is going to be paid out, right? 
Now, what does tax do to anything, right? So sales tax in general, or specifically sales tax, right? Sales tax increases what you're going to pay. So instead of paying, for example, I'm not, I'm not saying this is the answer. So instead of paying 150, which is the original price, which is what they asked you for, right? And um, you pay 165, which is more, right? So that's what tax does to it. So that's how I know it's going to be a plus sign here because it's supposed to be increasing the value of what's the original price, all right? Now the percentage is 15% from our example. The ending is 165.31. And then you're going to always have something that you need to be solving for, which I'm going to call X, right? So I'm solving for X here, which is the original price, okay? Now, what is 15%? as a decimal, okay? When you see this percent sign, you're just gonna throw it over 100. So 15 over 100. Now you're dividing by something, uh, like what we like to call, what are these? These are the exponents of 10. And you know, identify how many zeros do we have here? There's two, and then you're dividing. And so you're gonna be moving a decimal place, because decimal spot is actually right here, all right? And you're gonna be moving it two times based on the two zeros to the left. So that is going to give you the decimal. So 0.15 or 0 0.15, all right? So then I'm going to put my 0 0.15 here, okay? Then I'm just going to solve for the unknown value, which is X, which is representing the original or the beginning price, all right? This is what they asked us to solve for, all right? So step by step, let's kind of work through that, yeah? Um. So we're gonna have X, now I know this, from PEMDAS, you're just gonna do what's in the bracket. So whenever I add those two together, I'm gonna get 1.15 equals to 165.31, all right? Now, if you notice here, when you see two things married together like this, there's nothing in between it. There, remember, there's either, there must be doing something, right? So it must be either adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying. And if you notice, I don't see an add sign there. I don't see a subtract sign there. I don't see the mannerism of division happening here, which is something over something. That's the mannerism of division, right? So then there must be multiplying. That's the last thing there, okay? Now, if I'm solving for X, I'm trying to isolate for X. So this thing here is preventing me from having X equals to something. So how can I get rid of it? It's multiplying, so I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm going to divide by 1.15. So this is going to cancel with this one time, right? But what you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna divide the other side by 1.15, all right? Let's pull up our calculator real quick. Um, let's go here. So we have 165.31 divided by 1.15. I think that's it. Yep. That's going to give me 143.75. All right. So X equals to 143.75. So this is the original price of the oranges that we had for this example. All right. The CXC pass paper exam, I think from the 2022 pass paper. I think so. All right. But anyways, catch me in the next one and we'll continue doing problems. Later.